Hey guys, welcome to WPF Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about the grid in WPF. Let's start by taking a look at how we set up a grid in the first place. So today we're going to actually try to set up a simple game of tic-tac-toe. Um, and if you come from the world of HTML like I did, uh, when you first see the grid, you might automatically think that this is just an HTML table. Well, it's not really anything like an HTML table. In WPF, the grid allows the developer, which is us, to predefine the rows and the columns. So the first thing we need to do when working with the grid is define the layout. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set show grid lines to true because it's, we're creating a tic-tac-toe grid. So we actually want to be able to see the lines. Okay. And then next, what we're going to do is create the grid dot row definitions property element and the column definitions property element. So now we need to actually define the row definition and the column definitions. All we have to do is come in here and place the row definition tag in there. So that says we want three rows. And this says that we want one, two, and three columns. So as you can see in the designer view, there's basically a grid with three rows and three columns set up. So we can actually specify the column widths and the row heights right here. And there are three ways of sizing columns and rows in WPF. There's absolute sizing where you pick the exact size, but it's usually not flexible enough to deal with changing content. Um, there's auto sizing. This is probably one of the most useful of the sizing types. It gives each row or column only the space it needs. And then there's proportional sizing, where the row and column sizes are distributed evenly between the rows and columns that specify proportional sizing. So let's go ahead and, and just try auto first and see what happens. So I'm going to set my row height equal to auto. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then we're going to set our column width to auto as well. Copy and paste that. So now we have our column widths and row heights defined. So now let's go ahead and actually start adding uh, some X's and O's to the grid. All we have to do to do that is come in here and I'm going to add a text block. I'm going to put an X and you can see at the top left corner there is an X um, but it's it's not actually it's hardly visible um, so I'm gonna give it a font size of 80 there we go and then if you'll notice here um, I didn't specify a column or a row for it to go in so it's automatically gonna put it in 0 0 so let's go ahead and add an, another element um, we're just going to copy and paste this and we're going to add an O and we're just going to put it in row 1 column 1 and in order to do this we need to access our attached property our grid dot column put it in column 1 and then put it in row 1 All right. so it's kind of starting to look like a tic-tac-toe grid but what we need to do is go back and adjust that sizing auto to proportional. So I'm going to come in here and change all these to proportional. Like that. Oh, see, that's looking a little bit better. Um, so now you can see the spacing and the rows and the columns are more evenly distributed. The other thing that you might notice is that there is no centering. Um, what I mean by that is the elements are as far left as they can, they can possibly go. Uh, so all we need to do is come into the text block 
and go ahead and set the horizontal alignment. center on both text blocks and then we're also going to set the vertical alignment on both text blocks because you can't really see it right now but it, it does need to be vertically uh, centered as well so that's actually really all there is to the grid keep in mind that each of these cells can really contain just about anything except for like a window element or something so we could even put another grid in one of these cells so I'm going to show you that real quick I have some code down here that I had already defined of a grid and I'm just going to copy and paste it now we're just going to show you an example of what this could look like so yeah there's let's hit play and you'll see that I just put another tic-tac-toe grid within the tic-tac-toe grid and all I did was create a grid and I set the column to 2 and the row to 2 so that's going to put it in 0, 1, 2 column in zero one two row so there's one more thing I want to talk about with you real quick and that's the row span and the column span we're gonna add a button to this grid and we're gonna put it in column one in the first row um, so what we can do is we can use an attached property called row span what this is going to let the button do is it's going to let it span however many rows that I tell it to. So I want it to span two rows, and so that's what it's going to do. Um, I can set the column span as well to two, and that's going to let it span two columns. And that's how you use the row span and the column span. So that's actually it for today, guys. Hopefully you understand how to use and set up the grid in WPF. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions at all, please let me know and uh, comment below the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thanks, and see you guys next time.